now are a nation known to start war. We feel compelled because of our insecurity that we have to go over and attack these countries to maintain our empire. We have over 700 bases, we are in 130 countries, and they're talking about bombing Iran. It is such a dramatic change from what is truly American and truly constitutional. I don't want to run the world. The Constitution doesn't give me the authority to run the world. We ought to mind our own business is what we need to do. With all this spending overseas, wasted money, this is a continuation of a revolution. It is a peaceful revolution. It's up to you to spread this message around this country. This is an American cause. It's a cause of freedom. There's something going on in this country, and it's big. Spread the message. Thank you. Here we go. Welcome to Freedom Watch. Judge Napolitano, Peter Schiff, Cody Willard. Later on in the show, Congressman Ron Paul from Texas. And Stephen Moore from the Wall Street Journal. And Alan Combs from Fox News as well, to sort of keep us uh, honest. Talking about the stimulus, talking about freedom, talking about what the government has done to your freedom since we were last here. This is the first of our Wednesday 2 p.m. Eastern shows with people who understand the Constitution, who understand human liberty, who understand natural liberty, who believe that there are limits as to what the government can do, but the government disregards those limits, and we will tell you about them, and we will expose the government for what it, what it has done to take your freedom away from you. We're waiting for Congressman Ron Paul. He'll be here in just a minute. I read from the Fox News producers just a few minutes ago that a deal is in the works, that the Democrats in the Congress and on the, in the White House are thrilled that they will have a deal that only three Republicans will vote for. What the heck are they thrilled about? Who are those three Republicans? Well, they're Republicans in name only. Ar- name only. Arlen Specter of Pennsylvania, Olympia Snow, and Susan Collins. All Republicans, uh, only Republicans in name only. Except for Ron Paul, maybe. He's well, the- Ron Paul will be here for a minute to give, us a, to give us the inside. But big picture. I'll get to you in a second, Cody, and then we'll just have a conversation. How can the government be so wrong about this stimulus? How can smart well, people, and that's an assumption, yes. <laughs> think that you can cure a problem caused by too much borrowing and spending with more borrowing and spending? Well, because they don't understand the problem. That, that's the bottom line. They want to try to restore the conditions that led to the crisis. They think the problem is that consumers aren't spending enough. No, the problem was they were spending too much. The fact that credit is now being redirected away from consumers, the fact that Americans are having a hard time borrowing money to buy cars, that's a good thing. We need to free up that, those savings to entrepreneurs to build factories, because that's what we need. We need to make stuff. We don't need to buy stuff anymore. But you, know, you, you said at the beginning, the politicians are experts at creating a crisis, which this crisis is of government creation, and then using the fear to increase their own power and to say yeah. we need more government now to solve the problem that they created. But they blame it on the market. How is, this, how is this crisis, uh, and I fully agree, but how is this crisis of government creation? Well, I mean, the 70 years worth of policies of funneling capital at below market rates into real estate and propping up landlords and anybody who's rich enough to own real estate. And forcing has, banks to loan to, to people and on property, which they normally wouldn't choose to loan to and on that property. But, well, and not necessarily forcing them to, but, but creating artificial profit motives in the system the, the itself to, to, to get that capital into those places. And what happens is you've had 70 years of misallocation of capital and simply, as Peter, you know, we talk about inflation versus deflation. I'd love to hear your take on this. We are experiencing major deflationary cycles in real estate as the, that 70-year policy is coming undone. Is there, why are we so scared of a major deflationary cycle? Wouldn't that be great for the renters and well, savers of the world? Well, prices falling is a good thing. Certainly it's a good thing when food gets less expensive, when energy gets less expensive. Nobody complains when the price of cell phones comes down or plasma TVs come down. Right, to freak right. out no, that you're happens. not. That's not deflation. That's progress. That's falling prices. What we have now is inflation. It's always been inflation. The government is printing money. You have bursting bubbles in assets like stocks and real estate. But ultimately, there is inflation. inflation. Right. There is inflation right now. And you, you mentioned about 70 years. But the real problem that, that got much worse 
when Bush came to town after the bursting of the dot-com bubble, and instead of allowing the free market yes. to bring about a painful recession, he bragged about how shallow it was. Well, the price we paid was the real estate bubble. They inflated it. Alan Greenspan slashed interest rates down to practically nothing. He's the one that got everybody it drunk. Let me, let, me, not a let, me, let me stop you because Congressman Paul was on a time He's schedule. He's not up yet. So, all right. And all right. I'm moving seats to further instructions. Yeah. It's nothing personal, Judge. He's, I, he's I, like, I do love Peter, though. He's but the, the way, but the way, like but the, way the government did this is they gave us all the cheap money. They put Americans, both on Wall Street and Main Street, in a position to speculate either on consumption or just on real estate or what leverage products. And they created the entities like Fannie and Freddie. They created the tax code that distorted normal free market forces that would have prevented these bubbles from inflating in the first place. Why don't the American people understand that more government is a bad thing? <laughs> Well, there's a lot of things that people don't understand, but you know, people want to believe in, in, in miracles. Look at all the miracle weight losses that they sell. You, know, you can lose weight without exercise, without diet. That's what government is Judge, saying. That we can have wealth without sacrifice. Before you take Wait, the other the, side of the argument, because of his time constraints, I want please, to bring absolutely. Congressman we got, we got Paul Ron, Ron Paul. Con Congressman house. Ron Paul uh, of Texas, the champion of the Constitution the champion of individual liberties, and the champion of the free market joins us now. Congressman Paul, welcome to what is the first of, we hope, will be many Wednesday afternoon appearances on Freedom Watch. You are you are in a friendly environment here with the great Peter Schiff and the wonderful Cody Willard and your old buddy, Judge Napolitano. Welcome here. Well, thank you. What is the Appreciate atmosphere it. in the Congress right now? Are they uh, exultant? that it looks as though some kind of a deal has been cut between the Democrats in the Senate, the Democrats in the House, and the Democrats in the White House to mortgage our future. Well, they're obsessed right now with this idea of how to manage things because now they've essentially nationalized everything. Even, even the conservatives now are making the assumption, well, how can we best manage this? Now that the bank's got the bailout, how are we going to tell them what to do and how much to pay uh, their salaries and, and on and on? So it, it's a trap that everybody's fallen into. Uh, the Congress now is deep into central economic planning. They're not saying, how are we going to get out of this? They're saying, how are we going to meet our responsibilities now that we own uh, all the banks and uh, the financial institutions? So it, it to me, to is, a, is a bad, bad trend. Known to uh, all of us at this table, uh, argued this morning uh, in his column that one of the reasons the market went down Da, tick by tick, as to Tim Geithner spoke yesterday, to almost 400 points, was fear of nationalization. Who would want to invest in a bank that the government is within inches of taking over? Doesn't the government contemplate that before they send Tim, send Tim Geithner to Capitol Hill to say, Hank Paulson sp uh, spent it his way, I'm going to spend it my way, and then not tell us what the way is? Well, it isn't as... It isn't as much of a giant leap as you might think, because the banks have been in bed with the government for a long time. Uh, we have the Federal Reserve System, which is uh, a monopoly control of money uh, system. And then we have the banks who are involved with fractional reserve banking, and they accept government supervision. They don't have the marketplace, so now they get in a little trouble. They think it's a little bailout, but it's just another step deeper into the well of socialization.